Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, however this video finds you. My name is Chris Pascu. Once again, I am here on Sunday in my vehicle as I wait for my family to do some shopping. And so what better time than right now to talk to you guys or to anyone that's listening about a topic that's dear to my heart, and that is complacency. What is complacency? Um, and when I'm talking about complacency, I'm specifically talking about the formation of complacency in the spirit in the spiritual and the religious and the and the faith-based uh, understanding what that really means and and uh, the reason that that we shouldn't ever allow ourselves to become complacent um, that's basically my message here and so I begin to say that you know we are and in the previous videos you probably watched that uh, I proclaim that we are constantly changing, uh, constantly growing, maturing, uh, men and women of God created to uh, worship Him and to change. And that's ultimately uh, our, 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 our purpose in life, is to mature, to grow, to transform, to allow the God of all creation to transform us, to sanctify us through the Holy Spirit, and to worship Him. That's our purpose in life. Uh, you know, we do a lot of things that are contrary to His will. You know, we worship money, we worship cars, we worship football games and superstars and everything else in between that's really meaningless. But we should be worshiping the Creator of all uh, rather than all these other things and focusing on that before anything else. Putting God above everything in our life is the key. Uh, a purpose behind life and then second is to allow God of all to transform us to change to allow us to to constantly grow and mature uh, and, and what that means is that we have to have a a spirit filled life a spirit uh, understanding of the Holy Spirit in our life and how he works we have to be evident in our walk and and uh, leave behind fruits of the Spirit or fruits that identify us as Christians. And when we no longer are fruitful, like a tree, sometimes it needs a little bit of, I don't know, you know, f uh, you know, in farming, um, you've got plants and various um, um, farm. <laughs> I can't think of things. You know, if you have tomatoes or vegetables or trees of some sort and they just no longer are fruitful um, well there's two things two options one you cut it and you plant another one or you find a way to make that plant grow you give it uh, nourishments nourishments you uh, you water it you um, you do a bunch of other things that you know the world uh, you know what those what you call those chemicals that you put on around the plants to to give it uh, a little bit of uh, I guess uh, empower it to grow and to reproduce fruit. But generally, when we when a fruit or a tree stops growing and start stops producing fruit or becomes complacent, there's only two options: cutting it or empower it, it uh, empower it to grow. And the farmer usually does that. And so. In that sense, complacency is not good in the farming world because the farmer no longer has, you know, um, anything to to produce, and he'll lose his his purpose. Eventually, he'll no longer be a farmer if he doesn't have. If every plant just grows now and then, and then stops and becomes complacent, complacent. And when I say complacent, meaning it no longer produces fruit, and so. When, uh, when no longer, when the plant no longer changes, no, no longer produces fruit, then there's only two options. And like I said, it's, uh, it's, it's very difficult to find anything else except cutting it or empowering it to grow. And that goes along with our, my message here today. Uh, people, we are uh, designed to grow and mature and change. And as babies, we grow and get fed and you know we become wiser we understand the world around us our parents our families teach us equip us 
Uh, we go to school, we transform our brains, we educate our minds, and we make sense of reality, and we continuously adapt and transform. And so when we become Christians, the same thing happens. God ultimately transforms us and changes us because we are all broken sinners, fallen, and without God, without the grace and the mercy that God gives us, we can't escape this world. We actually will die and find eternity in hell because of our sinful nature and the sin amongst us that lives. But God came on this planet, the creator of all mankind, to die on the cross for us, to take the punishment so that way we don't have to suffer eternity in hell. We are given, gifted with the salvation, the grace, the 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 opportunity to go and see and, and be with God in heaven through the acceptance of his death and resurrection on the cross. And through that, we also receive the sanctification process of the Holy Spirit. And sanctification is the transformation of our minds, soul, and existence in the way that we reflect God. And that means that the, the sinner that comes to the cross and accepts Christ later throughout his life he starts producing fruits and vegetables or essentially a garden of the Holy Spirit's um, reflections so as he progresses and he produces and changes and produces more fruits of the Holy Spirit you can see the trend growing and changing and that person essentially develops a whole different character over the years as a Christian that he had before uh, he was born again or accepting Christ. And that is through filtered through the Holy Spirit who sanctifies us. So the sanctification process requires that a person stands corrected at all times and invites and invokes and, and, and allows the Holy Spirit to dwell within them the desire to reflect God. And when we no longer have that desire to reflect God, or we no longer invoke or uh, request the Holy Spirit's transformation, we're no longer open to the Holy Spirit, we reject correction, we no longer care about standing corrected, then the Holy Spirit no longer changes us and we become complacent. We either stand where we are and we live the rest of eternity in the formation of our understanding with the hopes that we don't backslide because the sin of this nature constantly no matter if you're a born again christian or not will will hound us and so if you stand corrected the holy spirit comes in and overcompensates and pushes the sin away if you decide to become complacent because you've had enough you think you you're educated well beyond your means that you've a, administered the Holy Spirit in your life, you transformed enough, and there's no more room, there's no more growth, then the sin will continue to hound us. And we are only as powerful as God allows us to be. We can't evade sin, and sin will constantly torture us. And so if you, if I think that for one minute we can withstand the nature of this world, the sin of this nature, we can run, we can run away. But we cannot not sin in this world. Only in heaven, sin no longer exists. But we can manage sin with the power, with the strength, with the, with the ability of the Holy Spirit who sanctifies us. Without the Holy Spirit, without the sanctification process, without the death and resurrection on the cross, we can't win this battle in this world. So that says that in order for us to allow the Holy Spirit to transform us, to pro produce um, a force beyond our force, we have to stand corrected and continuously grow and not allow ourselves to become complacent. If someone comes to you and says, you know, hey, brother and sister, you know, is there, you know, can you um, maybe point something out to you? Maybe, you know, there's some there's some kind of issue that they, they see that maybe hinders the way that God would reflect, right? So, I don't know, drinking, 
uh, smoking, partying, um, I don't know, things, things that are really, really, you know, there's, there's so many things of this world that can hinder the world um, or can hinder the world of God from reflecting the Holy Spirit. So when someone, a brother or sister sees that and says, hey, brother, sister, you know, uh, may, maybe um, maybe drinking um, so much to the point of exhaustion is not a good sign of the Holy Spirit. And is there anything we can do to pray for you or to help you overcome that? Maybe, maybe that's something that needs to convict that person saying, you know what? Yes, I stand corrected. But the minute that person rejects correction, the complacency begins and the Holy Spirit no longer um, changes or transforms that person. And the more we reject correction, the more we, we, uh, we attempt to um, deny the uh, conviction of the Holy Spirit, the easier it is to become complacent. And complacency is not good in the spirit world because essentially with with the world around us constantly hounding us with sin, complacency only gives in so much to the point of exhaustion where the enemy decides that finds a hole and then breaks through. And without the Holy Spirit's ability to reject that or understanding of how, we will lose the battle in this world. And some of us will backslide, backslide away from God, backslide into uh, maybe in some cases um, another sinful nature. Where are we going? Well, that will depend on where Fred Myers. we're going tonight. If we're not going, then we're not. So anyway, that further. said, that's my message. Don't become complacent. Always allow the Holy Spirit to transform and change you. Remember, stand corrected in every aspect of life because that is what God wants us to do. Remember, when we, when you became a Christian, when I became a Christian, I was lost. And I admitted that and I said, God, change me. Allow me to transform my life to reflect you. And that will never stop. That will constantly be part of our daily life, daily walk with Christ. The minute we change that outcome and we say, you know what, I think I know enough. I think I've learned enough. I don't need anybody to tell me anything. I believe I'm a Christian by the virtue of my life. I don't need change and transformation. That's when the enemy comes in and robs you from God's promise, God's blessings, God's opportunities. God wants you to constantly change, wants me to constantly change, and wants us to stand corrected because we're not perfect in any way, no matter how much we claim to be transformation or sanctification and admiration worshiping is the two elements of God's purpose for humanity may you never become complacent may you be on fire for God and may you, may you be always willing to understand and receive correction in in the form of spiritual correction where the Holy Spirit com compels you or through the brothers and sisters in Christ that uh, ad admire and want to encourage you to uh, properly do the right thing in life. So always stand corrected. May God bless you. Thank you for watching.